Dear friends and followers, welcome back to my channel and lovely greetings from Jakarta, Indonesia. In this video, we're going to be looking at a successful emergency. How did ATC, the pilots and the rescue teams work hand in hand to make this a successful outcome of this emergency? What can we learn from this? What is our takeaway? So what are we waiting for? And let's get started. Halifax Tower, control 259, clear down as the 23. Provincial 259, Halifax Tower, runway 23, wind 2306 knots, altimeter 3023, number one. Okay, to give you a bit of a background information about that flight, this uh, Provincial is actually a sort of wet lease company for Air Canada and they use predominantly the Dash 8, which is a well-known turboprop aircraft, has 76 seats for passengers, and then in normal crew configuration, it's two in the flight deck and two in the cabin. Now, on that day, they were flying from St. John's, Newfoundland, to Halifax, Nova Scotia. Now, you could hear pilots say that they're flying or that they're on the approach of the ANAF 2-3 approach. The tower controller gave them the landing clearance, they read back the landing clearance and also the winds were 230 with 6, so it's direct headwind, so absolutely nothing to worry about. So let's continue. Uh, copy uh, the Mayday, the uh, trucks are on their way. The aircraft landed and you could see from the passenger window there was flames coming out of the exhaust of that turboprop engine. Now I'm assuming that the aircraft has come to a complete stop and then the pilot broadcasts the mayday, mayday, mayday message. As he does so, the tower controller is obviously alerted by that and hits a big red button on his tower notifying all the rescue service teams on ground that there is presently an emergency going down. What I really like is that the air traffic controller announced that the Mayday has been copied and that the trucks are on their way, meaning that all the fire brigades and the ambulances are on their way to the aircraft. So let's continue. Provincial 2262 Tower, pull up and go around. In the uh, published message, Provincial 2262. Okay, that's just, weirdly enough, another provincial coming in for landing. The tower is obviously advising him to perform a go-around because uh, Romy 23 is now blocked due to the emergency. Also nice to hear, red 3 is en route, meaning red is the call sign for the fire brigades. If this is actual time, then you see how quickly they responded to that. We're talking about maybe 30 seconds after the alarm has gone off or after the Mayday call has been declared. 2259, back to it on the runway. 70, 77 souls on board and to 4,300 pounds fuel. No danger, good. Okay, that to me is the hero move of the day. Besides saying that they're going to evacuate on the runway, that's basically a normal call. He's gonna let the tower controller know that there's people gonna be running onto the runway. And that he has the capacity to tell him how many souls on board, meaning 77 is the 73 passengers I can tell, and then obviously two crew, the flight deck and the cabin crew. And then he also has the capacity to tell them how much fuel there is on board and that there are no dangerous goods. So why is that important? To announce the amount of fuel is really good because it's a great indicator for the fire brigade. That's more or less for them to know how much fuel there could be leaking out of the aircraft. They then can sort of assess how dangerous it actually is if there is 4,300 pounds of fuel sort of surrounding the aircraft. The third part, he said, is that there are no dangerous goods on board. And for me as a cargo pilot, that is super important. What he means by that, or why he said it, is that there are dangerous goods, for example, like lithium batteries that we have uh, on board on our aircraft quite a lot. They can't be extinguished with water. They can only be cooled with water, but there needs to be a certain chemical that the fire brigade has to have when they uh, come towards the aircraft to extinguish it. And that gives them the indication, okay, there are no dangerous goods. We can extinguish everything with foam and water. It's just gonna be fine. Uh, to be fair, that the pilot in that uh, moment has the capacity to do that, bravo. That was really, really cool. A hero move to me. Red three ground, all red vehicles cleared on the runway 23, dash eight, 77 souls on board. Uh, no dangerous goods, 4,000 pounds fuel. Doug, it's okay. Uh, runway 23, 
it'll be a left exit uh, for the uh, aircraft once you get on the runway. Okay, really great information here. The air traffic controller is basically repeating the message of the pilot one more time for the fire brigade. It could be that the fire brigade actually has heard that first transmission by the pilot already. It depends a little bit if they have a separate frequency they're speaking on or if they are on the same frequency as the aircraft and the tower are. And the next cool thing is you hear the fire brigade asking where they are. Now I'm speculating that the fire brigade is actually down here, uh, at least that's what Google says, and air traffic control tells the fire brigade to make an immediate left turn as they get onto the runway. This is super helpful. I mean, it is at night in low visibility conditions. This is incredibly important for the air traffic controller to tell them using the ground radar where the aircraft actually is for the fire brigade. I'm not sure of the nature of the emergency gear failure, perhaps. I did see uh, a little bit of fire. Uh, evacuating on the runway now. Okay, Roger. Okay, yet again, fantastic information by the tower controller. He is speculating, obviously he doesn't really know because the pilot didn't tell him, the pilot probably didn't know himself what was going on. We'll come to that in a minute. He now notifies the fire brigade that yes, there could be a potential gear failure. He saw a little bit of fire as he was monitoring the runway. And most importantly is that he says they're evacuating on the runway. He's telling the fire brigade, I mean, they know, but that there are passengers gonna be running around on the runway. So the fire brigade needs to approach the aircraft with caution because there could be passengers, you know, just wandering around in the dark on the runway. This is really, really good. Provincial 2262, contact terminal now on 119 or decimal two. 2262. Okay, fantastic job here by the air traffic controller. He obviously is still monitoring all the aircrafts that are on approach and he gave Provincial the uh, approach frequency that he then has to switch over as they are in their missed approach. Frequency, this is red 3, be advised I have a visual on the aircraft. 3 is going to be taking a position on the starboard hose. Jet second vehicle, cut the tail. The fire brigade is basically telling the pilot from which side they are approaching the aircraft, which gives the pilot a reassurance that they are actually there. And they're approaching it from the starboard side, so from the right-hand side of the aircraft, and one is coming from the tail. I believe the reason why they're approaching them from behind and on the starboard side is because the exit of the de Havilland is on, at the front left-hand side, meaning that's where the passengers are gonna be vacating, and uh, what good is it if there's a huge fire brigade with you know, a water cannon blasting the engine and the landing gear? So that's why they're coming from the other side. Still 2262, I think we're gonna plan the 3-2 for you. Uh, I don't know yet, so we're just gonna delay for a little bit here. Okay, understood, uh, Mitchell 2262, thanks. Now, just for the reference, this is Halifax Approach Control. That's a completely different frequency, and he's speaking to Provincial 2262. So that's the other aircraft that was just performing a go around. Now, we had calm winds, 230 with six knots. You could basically land on any other runway now, and that's why he said, we'll look into if runway 32 is available for you. You know, I mean, the emergency is happening on 23, so that is, you know, a good intention to do that. But let's continue. Provincial 2262, we're going to be on the bill 32, the airport is closed. Okay. Uh, think about it, go ahead, your intentions when you can. And uh, Provincial 2262, do you have any estimate of uh, how long 32 and 23 may be closed? I don't, uh, but uh, the reason the airport is closed is because there is no crash fire available. Now, we have key information that from the tower controller to the approach controller, the message was broadcasted that the airport is now closed, meaning for all runways. And it's not actually because of the blockage of the runway. I mean, yes, that is one part of it. But the second reason is that he said there is no air crash rescue vehicles there which makes total sense because now most of the fire brigade is now focusing on the emergency on runway 23. Runway 32, yes, might be available and you probably could land, but the thing is, let's say you have another aircraft that might have a gear failure or whatever, you know, emergency, then all the fire brigade is still focusing on the other aircraft so there's no uh, availability to you know, extinguish any fires at another aircraft. So that's why the airport is entirely closed. For the pilot to ask how long this is going to be closed for, 
yeah, I mean, sure, they kind of need to have an estimate in terms of fuel, where they can go, etc. If I know about an aircraft that has failed landing gear, I can expect this is going to take hours to remove the damaged aircraft, to remove, you know, clean the runway, etc., etc. I would have immediately gone for the alternate uh, destination. It's just as my my feedback to that. All right, let's look at the actual cause of the sort of initial report, the NTSB report of this accident. Now, what the uh, investigators have found is that at St. John's, when the aircraft departed, the left tire of the left main landing gear actually sort of disintegrated or sort of blew up as it was taking off. There was no damage to the airplane yet, and then the sort of the gear retracted, they did, went into cruise flight, all is good, and then they came on to approach, extended or lowered the gear, and as this sort of damaged tire touched down onto the runway, there was a slight imbalance and remaining debris of that burst tire got flung up and then hit the main landing gear strut, which then sort of got damaged. And then the landing gear collapsed. As the wing then tilted to the ground, obviously the propeller of the turboprop then hit the runway and that was sort of caused all these flames coming out of the exhaust of the turboprop and then, yeah, coming to a stop on the runway. It is slightly worrying that they didn't realize the blow-up tire uh, upon takeoff. Yes, this can go unnoticed. I mean, this is all in the dark. You can't expect that a passenger can, you know, tell the difference between a damaged tire or a fully functioning tire. Now, I also quickly want to go into the evacuation checklist that the pilots must have read as they declared that Mayday and came to a full stop uh, on the runway. So here is the evacuation checklist. We would then set the emergency brake set. Uh, this might sound weird, but yeah, it's basically the, uh, a parking brake that you are setting just to make sure that the aircraft isn't moving any much forward. I mean, this is for any emergency, okay? This is not just because, uh, I mean, clearly the aircraft couldn't move any, any much further. Then the power levers to disc, I'm assuming disc is actually to disconnect. Then the conditions lever, the fuel cutoff. So then you are just ensuring that the engines aren't running anymore. Pull the fuel and hydraulic off handles. They are then basically just cutting the fuel and the hydraulic power of the engines. Then the emergency lights on, that is for the passengers in the back. The fasten seat belt signs off, clearly, because you want the passengers to evacuate, because here it says evacuation initiate. I'm not sure if on the dash uh, eight you have a little button. On the Airbus you have this button where you hear this terrible squeaking sound of the evacuation horn. Could also just be that the pilots then do via PA uh, an address that it's evacuate, evacuate, evacuate. And then lastly, you have the AC, DC, external power and APU off. I am assuming the APU wouldn't have been on in that moment. That's probably off. And then the, the battery master switch also to off. And then the pilots evacuate themselves. They obviously make sure that the last passenger has gone off board, that the crew is off board. They probably will go up and down the cabin one time just to make sure that all the passengers are uh, evacuated and then will be the last to leave the aircraft. Evacuation check is complete. I hope you enjoyed this successful emergency scenario. I thought it was uh, really, really nice uh, to see that the pilots and the ATC controller and the uh, fire brigade really worked closely hand in hand. And especially the response time, I thought of the fire brigade was so incredibly quick. That's what you expect, right? It gives the pilots an incredible reassuring feeling knowing that there's a fire brigade, you know, coming as quickly as possible to extinguish the fire. I'm really, really happy to see or read that no one got hurt or injured during this evacuation. Uh, an evacuation is somewhat of a panic situation so people are really sort of uh, falling over each other and I would assume that when the wing is on the ground that the stairs of the Q400 in that position are not going to be level with the ground so it could be quite challenging to actually get off the stairs uh, people you know in the evacuation situation are just like running out of the aircraft someone could have easily broken their arm or leg or whatever coming out of the aircraft so i'm really happy to hear that no one got injured and yeah so hats off to the cabin crew and the pilots they did a fantastic job also the fire brigade and the atc and yes this was a successful uh, evacuation. If there's more of these successful emergencies you'd like me to do or review, I'm more than happy to. I think this puts a very positive note uh, for future pilots and for the pilots that were in that scenario. And uh, yeah, I like doing those. So on that bombshell, here's your checklist for today. Subscribe to my channel, check, activate the notification bell, check, follow my Instagram account, check, form a touch and go. 
at my website, check. And don't forget, a good pilot is always learning. Wishing you all the best, your Captain Joe.